Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. Hello, friends, and welcome. Yeah, welcome to Class 50. All right, it's great to be finishing, finishing our first 50 classes. We've come a long way, haven't we? We've covered a lot of material in these first 50 classes. I hope you're following along. I hope you understand everything and that you're doing all right. I hope you don't have too many problems with the material. And remember, if you do have any questions, be sure to write us at the website, bauganingles.com. You can log in. I hope you're all subscribers. You can log in and you can send a message uh, to us through the website. And we will do our best to answer your grammar questions, your English questions. And if you have any feedback, any, you know, if you want to say, hey, great job, great. I would love to hear it. Also, if you have any suggestions or things you'd like to change, or th well, things you'd like me to try to, to cover in a different way so that you can benefit more, I'm open to suggestions. So please communicate, right? Now, you can reach me through the website, bauganingles.com, uh, sending in a message um, to our team there who will answer your questions. They send the questions on to me, and I, I respond to them on the program. I build in the explanations into the, the lessons here on the radio. But I also, um, I also you know, have people write in and write to me personally with ideas and different things that they would like me to explain or mention. So if you have anything and you'd like to write me directly, or if you would like to be a guest on the program and come on the radio with me, you can do that too. Send me an email. You can send me an email to my, my Vaughn account, which is kmiller, K-M-I-L-L-A-R, arroba, at, arroba, vausis, V-A-U-S-Y-S, dot com, like, K-M-I-L-L-A-R, K-M-I-L-L-A-R, arroba, bausis, punto com, V-A-U-S-Y-S, dot com. Send me an email, and you can give me your feedback, or, of course, you can always reach me through the website, bauganingles, punto com. Log into your account, and send a message through a question for our team of teachers to help you. Or you can say, please pass this message on to Kyle, which is me, and I will, uh, I will answer your question. Okay? So, yesterday we were talking about meters squared. Now, in the United States, people will measure uh, houses typically in, in, in feet. Squared feet. Square feet. Or feet squared but typically we say square feet but we, we often with meters we often say meters i would say most often meters squared so i said the plot of land for example my neighbor's plot of land la parcela my neighbor's plot of land is 600 square meters is we don't say tiene we don't say it has no he had no no it is 600 square meters my parents house is, oof, I don't know, maybe it's quite big, maybe three, 300 square meters. I think in, well, they think in feet, square feet squared or square feet. But um, in Europe, everyone uses square meters or meters squared. You can say it either way. And uh, it's amazing the value in Canada. You know, my parents have a house that's huge, and they probably, and they live in a town on the ocean. And their house, if they sold it today, would probably sell for about 80,000 euros. Okay? Now, my flat in Madrid uh, that I rent, I'm guessing if I were, if, well, not that I own it, but if, if the owner sold it, maybe they could get... 400, 400 or 500,000 euros. And my parents' house costs 80,000 euros. And they live on the ocean. They have maybe three or f 350, I'll say, square meters, well, near the ocean, 
Big house, upstairs, downstairs, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, kitchen, front lawn, this bed, like a lawn, and a back lawn and trees and everything. For So the key, I mean, when I retire, I'm going to go to Canada, sell whatever I have in Spain, go to Canada and live like a king because it's so much cheaper there. You have to buy houses. Yeah, very cheap. Anyway, their house is I would say 350 square meters, okay, or meters squared. Yesterday we were talking about countries, and I said that Russia is the largest country in the world, the biggest country in the world over, more than, over 17 million kilometers squared. Yeah, it, it's actually over 11% of the total surface of the Earth is Russia. And Canada is about 6.7% with almost 10 million kilometers squared. China and the United States are very, very close. Both of them, 9.6 or no, uh, 9.5, 9.6 million kilometers squared. The next is Brazil, the next largest. The fifth largest is Brazil, about 8.5 million kilometers squared. Australia's next, 7.6 million kilometers squared. India's number seven. There, number seven is India with about 3.3, almost 3.3 million kilometers squared. So that's the surface area, the area of India. So the largest country in the world is Russia. We have Russia, Canada, then China, and or United, the United States, I should say, or the United States. It's, it's a, it seems to be a little bit disputed depending on how you quantify the, uh, the land that belongs to China. There are some disputed regions depending on who you, who you want to ask. Anyhow, there you go. So measuring area. Folks, quantifying area, meters squared or square meters, okay? But it is, my house is about 100 meters squared, my flat here in Madrid. America, uh, British people say flat, and American people send, tend to say apartment. But people also live in a slightly different arrangement in, in North America, at least. So what I think of as a, an apartment is a bit different from the flats in Madrid. I lived in what I would call apartments in Canada, but even now, even though I'm Canadian, I call my house here a flat because it's it's all one floor, several bedrooms on one floor, and um, yeah, we call it a flat. But an apartment maybe has multiple levels, and it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a... Uh, a place that you you typically rent an apartment, and uh, yeah, you have a landlord. I I have a landlord here, and I have roommates as well, compañeros de piso. It doesn't mean they share my room, but we share the flat. But in English, we say roommates still for that. Okay, in the last class, we were also looking at the translation list. Translation list number three. So I'd like to move on. And take a few minutes to review that list. Let's go. Translation. All right, number one. ¿Te puedes imaginar cómo sería esta oficina sin Pedro? Can you imagine what this office would be like without Pedro? I can't. I can't imagine it. Can you imagine what this office would be like without Pedro? Number two. ¿Cuánto antes hables con él? Mejor. The sooner you talk to him, the better. Good. The sooner, the better. Cuanto antes, mejor. The sooner, the better. Repeat. The sooner, the better. Cuanto antes, mejor. The sooner, the better. Cuanto antes hables con él, mejor. The sooner you talk to him, the better. Okay? Number three. Él está esperando que digas algo. He's waiting for you to say something. He's waiting for you to say something. Yes. Number four. ¿Qué quieres que le diga? What do you want me to tell him? What do you want me to tell him? Good. Number five. Había 200 personas presentes para la inauguración. There were 200 people present. There were 200 people present at the inauguration. Inauguration. 
inauguración. There were 200 people present at the inauguration. Very good. Number six. Diviértate y no te metas en líos. Have a good time and don't get into trouble. Get into trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Don't get into trouble. Number seven. Eso es lo último que yo esperaba de ti. That's the last thing I expected from you. That's the last thing I expected from you. Very good. Number eight. ¿Para qué sirve llamarla ahora? ¿Para qué sirve llamarla ahora? What good does it do to call her now? What good does it do to call her now? There's no point. Don't call her now. What good does it do? ¿Para qué sirve? What good does it do to call her now? Number nine. Es una pérdida de tiempo. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Number ten. La he dejado para siempre. I've left her for good. For good. I've, with the contraction, I have, I've, I've left her for good. Remember, we contract have as an auxiliary verb. In the present perfect, I have, I've, 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 I've. But when it's a main verb, we don't contract. We don't say I've a pen. No, I have a pen. I've left her for good. I have left her because have is the auxiliary verb. We contract it in that case, but we don't normally contract it when have is the main verb, okay? Now, I've left her para siempre, for good. For good, para siempre. Permanently, right? But this is an expression for that, permanently. Number 11, empezaron mal. They got off to a bad start. They got off to a bad start. Yes. And number 12, estás luchando por una causa perdida. You're fighting for a lost cause. Estás luchando por una causa perdida. perdida. I think I said perdida, but no, no, no. Perdida. Estás luchando por una causa perdida. Yeah, that's right. That's better, isn't it? You're fighting for a lost cause. A lost cause. Very good. All right, there we go with our little review of the translation. Translation list number three. Putting you to the test. Make sure you're studying these lists at home, right? Very good. <laughs> Expression of the day. All right, it's time now for our expression of the day. Yes, the expression of the day today is to get wind of something. To get wind, viento. To get wind, like conseguir viento. <laughs> to get wind of something. Now, this means... To hear something or to find out, averiguar, to find out, to discover something or hear something. You know, to hear it as a rumor, for example, I got wind of that. I got wind of it. Okay? He was trying to keep it a secret. He's getting married. But he didn't want to tell anyone, but I, I, I got wind of it. Because he told his friend Bill, and I heard him telling Bill. I got wind of it. I overheard it. I got wind of it. So to get wind of something is to hear something, maybe a rumor or some information that is not publicly known. It's not known by everyone yet, but you, you acquire. So you're acquiring the information. It means you, you, when you get wind of something, it means you acquire special information that maybe not everyone knows yet. To get wind of it. I got wind of some interesting rumors. I got wind of the news about the new expansion. To get wind of something. Okay? Very good. Now I want to talk about a structure that I hear a lot of people mis make mistakes with, which is it depends 
on. Depende de lo que sé. Whatever. It depends on. Now, I hear this so many times I hear mistakes with this. It depends because the, the verb to depend. Now, the subject is it. So, third person singular, the verb needs an S. So, it depends. It depends on. Of no vale. It depends on. So, repeat. It depends on you. It depends on you. It depends on me. It depends on me. It depends on the weather. It depends on the weather. It depends on who you ask. It depends on who you ask. It depends on the boss. It depends on the boss. It depends on the climate. It depends on the climate. It depends on him. It depends on him. It depends on the time. It depends on the time. It depends on the schedule. It depends on the schedule. It depends on my mother. It depends on my mother. It depends on the book. It depends on the book. It depends on the recipe. It depends on the recipe. Okay. It depends on. It depends on something or someone. It could depend on any number of things, right? So if you say, well, uh, if, you make, if you make chocolate chip cookies, do you need butter or margarine? Well, it depends on the recipe. It depends on who you ask. It depends on which recipe you use, okay? We'll come back to this structure in a few minutes, and we'll come back to it and practice more tomorrow as well. Vocabulary of the day. That's right. We'll get back to that structure. It depends on because now, in a few minutes, because now it's time for our vocabulary. So the vocabulary today, starting with the term in Spanish, pensar en voz alta. To think out loud. I'm just thinking out loud. Estoy pensando en voz alta. I'm thinking out loud. Contraseña. Oh, if you use a computer, you have to know this one. Contraseña. Password. Password. Pauta. Pauta. Pattern. Pattern. Very good. Insinuar. To insinuate. Invertir. Dinero, tiempo, invertir. To invest. To invest. Okay. Now, whether or not we can talk about another structure depends on, well, it depends on whether or not there is time. The things we can cover in one class depend on the time. It depends on how much time we have. And we're out of time, so we're going to end now. But tomorrow, the next class, I promise, we will start with a review and we'll talk about it depends. It depends on. And we'll practice this with more structures tomorrow. You won't want to miss it. It's going to be fantastic. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>